Glorious devotees, thank you for viewing this presentation on Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's Sri Madhurya Kadambani, The Monsoon Clouds of Sweetness. We'll continue to speak from the seventh shower of nectar, flow of divine rapture. A supremely pure sense of identity, I, and possessiveness, mine. At this stage, the devotee's conception of his self, Ahamta, enters his perfected spiritual body, Siddhadeha, which is suitable for his cherished service to Bhagavan, and which he will attain at Vastu City. That devotee continues to live in this world, having almost given up the body in which he is performing sadhana, sadhaka deha. His feeling of possessiveness, mamata, in regard to Sri Krishna, awakens by begging for the honey of his lotus feet. Some commentary on this verse by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur on the nature of Bhava Bhakti. The living entity's practice of bhakti awakens his pure nature as a servant of Bhagavan. In other words, it awakens his perfected eternal identity. The sadhaka now performs the limbs, angas of bhakti, such as shravana and kirtana, with this self-conception. The perfected eternal identity of the devotee in whom bhava has arisen automatically manifests as a momentary vision, sporty in his heart. His perfect self-conception matures to such an extent that, although he remains in this world, he almost completely renounces, no longer identifies with, his present body as a sadhika. His sense of possessiveness is absorbed in relishing the nectar honey of the lotus feet of the divine couple just as a bumblebee is absorbed in relishing pollen. The sadhika, who has developed bhava, becomes almost completely free from a sense of identity, I, in relation to his material body, which is made of five elements. He also becomes almost entirely free from a sense of possessiveness for anything related to it, mine. The Jatarati Sadika becomes free from this misconception. The misconception spoken of here is the sense of I and mine in relationship to his material identity. However, his true conception of I really deepens only in his perfected spiritual body, his Siddhadeha which is fully suitable for serving Sri Krishna. A material body cannot render transcendental service to the divine personality of Godhead. On achieving complete perfection in sadhana, the sadhaka receives a spiritual body known as the Siddhadeya, which is fit for rendering direct service to Bhagavan. While meditating on this Siddhadeya, the sadhika develops a strong sense of possessiveness, mamata, for serving Sri Krishna's lotus feet that nurtures his desired mood. Vishwanath continues, At this stage, the devotee behaves like a miser who has attained the great jewel of bhava and is attempting to hide the bhava from others. But just as a bright face indicates inner wealth, the characteristics that take shelter of him, such as tolerance and renunciation, allow learned saintly persons to identify a devotee who has reached the stage of bhava, the jata rati bhakta. However, to the general populace, he appears to have a disturbed mind. Commentary in regards to this. At the stage of bhava, the devotee constantly remembers the Lord, attaining the stage of Dhruvanusmriti. Lord Kapila says, The primary sign that 
pure union in devotion, free from any material quality, has appeared in someone's heart, comes when, upon hearing about my qualities, that person's thoughts are drawn immediately and irresistibly towards me, the indweller of every being. In the same way that the waters of the Ganges flow spontaneously towards the ocean. Like the flow of the Ganges, such devotion to the Supreme Person is unmotivated and unimpeded. In Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Srila Rupa Goswami has described some of the symptoms of the Jata Rati Bhakta. The following nine symptoms, Anubhavas, manifest in the heart of a sadhaka in whom bhava, or the sprout of prema bhakti, has arisen. 1. Santi, forbearance, avyartha kalatva, not wasting any time, virakti, detachment for worldliness, mana sunyata, freedom from pride, asa bandha, firm hope of receiving Bhagavan's grace, Samut Kantha, longing for one's desired object, Sri Bhagavan, Namagane Sadaruchi, a perpetual taste for chanting Bhagavan's holy name, Asakti Stad Gunakyane, attachment to narrations of the divine qualities of Bhagavan, and Priti Stad Vasati Stale, love for the pastime places of Bhagavan. It is the softening of the heart that is the actual root symptom of rati. In certain circumstances, one may see symptoms such as tears and horripilation in fruitive workers who desire enjoyment and in jnanis who desire liberation but they should not be mistaken as indications of rati. Rather, one should regard them as the mere semblance of rati, ratya bas. Mishwanath continues, Bhava also is of two types. Raga bhaktyutha, awakened by following the process of ardent, spontaneous devotion, and two, vajya bhaktyutha, awakened by following the process of regulative devotion. The first type is intense in both quality and magnitude because there is no veneration of Bhagavan's godhood or dominion, nor knowledge of his other glories as described in the scriptures. In this way, the mood of considering oneself equal to or greater than him makes this bhava very condensed. The second type is in both quality and magnitude somewhat inferior to the first, since knowledge of Sri Bhagavan's divine majesty undermines one's sense of possessiveness, mamata, for him. That is, weakens it. This second type of bhava is not as condensed as the first. These two bhavas manifest respectively in the hearts of the two types of devotees who have either of these spiritual aspirations, and they relish them in two separate ways. Sadhana bhakti, the practice of devotion, is of two types, ardent, spontaneous devotion, rag bhakti, and regative devotion. Vaidhi Bhakti. Rag Bhakti is filled with greed, Loba Mai, whereas Vaidhi Bhakti is impelled by the instructions of the scriptures, Shastra, Sasana Mai. In this way, Bhava is also of two types, awakened by spontaneous devotion, Rag Bhakti, and awakened by regulative devotion, Vaidhi Bhakti. In terms of quality and magnitude, Bhava awakened by rag bhakti is far superior to the second type of bhava, which is awakened by the practice of vaidhi bhakti. 
In Rag Bhakti, knowledge that Sri Krishna is the supreme controller does not arise in the devotee. As a result, that devotee's affection for him is devoid of feelings of awe and reverence. Their relationship is likened to the affectionate relationship between near and dear ones in this material world. Mora putra, mora saka, mora prana pati. Krishna is my son. Krishna is my friend. Krishna is my dear most beloved. Consequently, such devotees taste his sweetness without constraint. Devotees belong to one of these two distinct aspirations of heart based on the path of devotional service they undertake. They are either followers of Rag Bhakti or Vaidhi Bhakti. The heartfelt aspiration of the devotee on the path of Rag Bhakti is free from any scent of desire for personal happiness and consists entirely of concern for Sri Krishna's happiness. On the other hand, a desire for personal happiness is prevalent in the heart of the devotee on the path of Vaidhi Bhakti. The culmination of his heart's aspiration is to become free from worldly miseries or to obtain liberation from material identification. Therefore, according to these different aspirations of heart, two different types of bhava manifest. The respective devotees relish these two bhavas differently. Vishwanath continues, giving the categories of bhava. Just as condensed rasa enters mangoes, jackfruits, grapes, sugar crane, and so forth, thus giving each a unique flavor and sweetness, similarly devotees are of five categories according to the speciality of the bhava they possess. Santa, passivity, Dasha, servitude, Sakya, friendship, Vatsalya, parenthood, and Prasyasi, amour. Those in the mood of neutrality experience Santa, tranquility. Those in the mood of affectionate servitude experience Preeti, affection. Those in the mood of friendship experience Sakya, friendship. Parents or elders experience Vatsalya, parental affection and the beloved damsels, prayasis, experience priyata, transcendental, amorous love. In this way, the distinct nomenclature of each of the bhavas is given. Thus, there are five different types of devotees based on differences in devotional sentiments. Just as there is an increasing degree of intensity in the taste and sweetness of grapes, sugarcane, jackfruit, and mango. Similarly, the sweetness relished and the inherent qualities present in Santabhav are superior to Dashyabhav. This progression continues from Dashyabhav to Sakyabhav, from Sakyabhav to Vatsalyabhav, and finally from Vatsalyabhav to Kantabhav or Madhurya Bhav. In the Madhurya Rasa, the quality of commitment to Krishna found in Santa Rasa, the abundant service of Dasya Ras, the lack of awe and reverence of Sakya Ras, and the intense possessiveness and care found in Vatsalya Ras are all present. In addition to these, the special quality of Madhurya Ras is that Krishna's lovers serve him by intimately offering their bodies to his service. Madhurya Ras thus has the qualities of all five Rasas. As sound, the quality of sky, is also present in the other four material elements, air, fire, water, and earth. Similarly, all the qualities are compounded in each successive element. Earth thus has all five qualities, sound, touch, form, taste, and smell. Similarly, Madhurya Ras is also the aggregate 
of all five types of rasa. The intensity of its taste is most wondrous indeed. The following question may be raised. If there is a gradation of relish among the rasas starting from Santa, would not everyone be inclined toward the most excellent Madhurya Rati? And would not all other rasas thus be deemed worthless? We see that everyone has an inclination for the topmost object. In answer to this question, Rupa Goswami says, Each of the devotional flavors has some special, delightful qualities not present in the preceding ones. Even so, a devotee may find any one of them to be more delectable according to his own individual proclivities. Discernment regarding the relative superiority or inferiority of the various rasas is possible for that person who is totally immersed in a particular rasa. Although a person may not have tasted other rasas, he will nevertheless understand the features of another rasa by comparing its distinguishing characteristics with his own. This is exemplified in the Leela narrative wherein Uddhava, who was situated in Dashyabhav, is schooled in the highest loving mood of the gopis Madhurya Bhav invoked by their separation from Krishna. Uddhava's observations of the gopis serve to further nourish and enhance his personal loving mood for Krishna. We thank you so much for taking your valuable time to view this presentation. We hope that it is deepened your spiritual understanding, and will nourish your spiritual practice. Hare Krishna.